Hi, I'm Stuart from Vino Ultrasound and welcome to this very brief introduction to ultrasound for aesthetics. So let's start quickly with how an ultrasound machine works. So basically every ultrasound machine is going to have a computer, some knobs or controls to adjust the image, a monitor to display the image and a transducer. So basically what the ultrasound does is it transmits and receives ultrasound waves via the transducer and then the computer interprets those ultrasound waves and displays an image in real time. So for these um, modern handheld ultrasound machines that we see a lot of, the phone or tablet that connects with the ultrasound transducer basically acts as the computer, uh, the display, as well as the knobs and controls too. So in ultrasound, we have many different types of transducers. In aesthetics, we typically only use high frequency linear transducers. And the reason for that is that higher frequency transducers have a better resolution image um, for superficial imaging. The other thing about linear transducers is that the ultrasound beam is sent straight out and straight back. Whereas with the convex transducers that you see, the beam is splayed out so you get a wider field of view. So convex transducers typically have a lower frequency, which gives them better penetration, um, but they have lower resolution as well. So higher frequency transducers gives you higher resolution, lower frequency transducers gives you better penetration. So that's the reason why we use high frequency linear transducers in aesthetics. So let's talk a little bit about how different soft tissues appear on ultrasound. So basically any structures that are highly reflective of sound waves are going to appear brighter on ultrasound, while structures that let the sound waves pass through them appear darker on ultrasound. So in ultrasound terminology, we refer to this as echogenicity. So this image on the right hand side of the screen here is our temporal region, and you can see that at the bottom of the image, we have this really bright white line. This is the temporal bone. So hyperechoic structures, such as bone and connective tissue, are good reflectors of sound waves, and they're gonna appear white or bright on ultrasound. So this is the temporal bone. Uh, this is the superficial temporal fascia, and we can see the layers of the temporal fascia, and you can see the deeper temporal fascia here. And then right at the top of the screen here as well, we have the skin, which is also reflective of sound. So if I go ahead and play this um, video now, we can see this structure moving towards the bottom of the image. And this is the temporalis muscle. And we can see that it is darker than the surrounding structures. And we call this hypoechoic. So it's not completely black, which would be anechoic. It's hypoechoic. And muscle is a really good um, example of a hypoechoic structure. Anything that lets a sound wave completely pass through it, um, such as fluid, cysts, um, even HA filler, that's going to appear black or very, very dark on ultrasound, and we term that anechoic. So HA filler, we can see in the same region in the temple here as these little blobs of anechoic um, structures in here. And if I go ahead and play that, you can see that it looks different to the surrounding muscle tissue. And the other thing that we can see in this video is some color. So let's talk about color Doppler. Color Doppler is basically a mode on ultrasound which detects movement. So it's really useful for aesthetic imaging because it's able to pick up blood flowing in arteries and veins. So if we have a look at the same image that we've been looking at down the bottom here, we can see the deep temporal artery just above the bone down here. And we can basically, when you put color Doppler on, you'll see all of the color flow within this yellow sampling box. So one thing to mention is that the color indicated by the ultrasound machine, red is movement towards the probe. So if you look at the image here, you can see it's got a scale. So anything that's moving up towards the probe, so as in going from deep to superficial, is going to appear red, and anything that's moving the opposite direction is going to appear blue. So anything from moving from superficial to deep is going to appear blue. It doesn't indicate or differentiate artery from vein. 
And if we look at this next image here, we've got the facial vein, it just happens to be blue on this image, and the facial artery, and we've also got the labiomental artery, so we're in the lower part of the face down here, you can see the position of the probe. We've got a cross-section or short axis of the DAO, we've got some superficial fat, we've got the SMAS, which is connective tissue, so it's this bright white line. And then deep to this, we've got the mandible as well. You can see the masseter on the left, um, and we can see the deep fat here under the facial vein. So I'm gonna play this video. A better way to differentiate artery from vein is to have a look at the pulsatility of the vessel. So you can see here that the labiomental and the facial artery are pulsing away, whereas the facial vein is not. Um, and if you put a bit of pressure on with your probe as well, you can collapse the veins far more easily than you can collapse the arteries. And then we have this image in the uh, mid-face region, so we're just here lateral to the nose. This is the angular artery, and we can see that the, this is actually the same vessel, even though we can see some of it is red and some of it is blue. We can see that the angular artery is basically going down in this direction. So we can see this part is blue because it's moving away from the probe and this part is red because it's coming back up towards the probe here. So that's the reason for the red and the blue. The final thing we'll talk about quickly is knobology. So basically that refers to different knobs that you can use to adjust the image. The few things that you need to know for aesthetic ultrasound is depth. So all images, oh sorry, all ultrasound machines will have a depth knob so that you can frame the image. So you want the structures to be large enough so that you can see them easily, but you don't want to be so zoomed in that you miss out on important information. In terms of ultrasound, we call brightness gain. So you can adjust the brightness of the image by adjusting the gain. I mentioned frequency before. Of course, we want a high frequency linear probe, but all of these probes have an adjustable frequency to some extent. So you can increase your frequency to try and get a higher resolution image, or you can decrease your frequency if you need to get a uh, better penetration. So if you need to image something deeper, uh, perhaps the mass of the muscle or something like that. You can also adjust the focus position on most ultrasound machines too, so that a particular part of the image is the clearest part of the image. In terms of color Doppler, we can adjust the gain as well. So we can adjust the brightness of the color signal and we can adjust something called PRF, which stands for pulse repetition frequency. So for vessels with slower flow, we usually decrease the PRF and that makes it more sensitive to slower flow vessels, or we can increase the PRF for vessels with a higher rate or higher velocity of flow.